Hello fellow problem solvers. So today we're continuing our Connect 4 game in Python. So we've left off with we need, needing to check if we want on a column, a row, or a diagonal after we've made a move in the column P run row P. Let's first do the co column and let's look at the diagram and see how this whole thing looks. So what we have is we have this sort of situation and now after somebody places a move, what happens? Well, to check for the column, the only thing I need to do is look down. Look down. Is this the same sign as this one? And then is this one the same sign as that one? And then is this one? No, it's not. So, I, and I don't have four, so I haven't one yet. And then again, you can, that's how you check the columns. So let's first do that. And I invite you to pause for two to five minutes and try to figure out, you know, code up the check win on the column. So now that we're here, we're gonna define this check win on the column of board, column P and row P. So we need to look at, okay, so we're starting at, so the starting point, starting is going to be board of row P, then column P, P throw in this column. So now we need to go upwards, right? Because the bottom of the row is higher so and we're going to have a count is going to be one at the beginning now for i in range three because we're only going to be going up to three we're going to have if row p plus i plus one is if this whole thing is not if it's less than the number of rows so that is going to be the length of the board and this is less than the number of rows which needs to be then we can actually do this thing then do something else we return false now the something that we're doing is we are going to be checking is board of row p plus i plus one is this equal to start if this is equal to start then what do we do well in this case we Huh, we increment the count by one, but we don't really need to do that really. Like we can just, if we never get into in this situation, then we can just return true. And now let's actually check that this thing works. So let's just like return check win on the column. And we're looking at check win. Yes. So let's play the game once. I'll give you a four, a three, a four, a three, a four, a three, a four. And why hasn't broke? Oh yes, because we're not using this. So game is on is equal to not check win. So now let's break out and we'll see. Okay, one free, one free, one, one. And we've broken out. So this column thing seems to be working great. So now we have the check win for the column. Let's look at the row. And again, I invite you actually here to pause for about five minutes and figure out how you're going to be doing this. So if we look at the row, what we have here is say we're adding heart here, an X here, and then the row. So what do we need to check? We need to go both left and right and count the number of hearts. So for example, when we place this X here, we went, okay, X, great. And then, oh, no more X's, bad. So, I mean, and it's not bad, it's just like the count is one. Now the count is going to be, if we go here, count is three, and then one more time here, and we see, no, the count is just three. So we just have three X's in a row here. Now, on the other hand, if, and we could also return the count because that can be useful later on when we make the AI, but let's worry about that later. And here, what will happen is we'll add a heart, and then we just count one. I can count no more, so this is two, and then I go one, two, and it's like, okay, I won. So now how are we going to implement that? Here I invite you to pause for five to 10 minutes. Okay, so now let's do the, what, what do we call this check win off row? So let's define check win off row. And now we have the start is the same as the board of the row P and column P. And now the count starts at one, count is equal to one. So we need to go now both left and right. And what does it mean to go left and right? Well, it means to stay in the same row, 
but go left and right into the column. And we can do this in two ways. We can first go left, then go right. And I think that's actually a fair thing for us to do. So for i in range four, uh, range three, yeah, we don't need to look more than three ahead. I think we can just like go first left, then right. So go left. And what does it mean to go left? Well, it means to look at the x. Okay, we first need to say, so we're going left, which means we're going towards zero. It's going to be rho of p minus one minus i. This is going to be the column that we're going to be looking at. And if column is going to be, what do we need? We need it to be, if it's greater than or equal to zero, right? Greater than or equal to zero. Then what we have, then we do something else we break. We just break out of the loop. There's no need to go forward if we're at a number that's less than or equal to zero. And then we will go right again for i in range. We can do an op a little bit of an optimization of four minus the count. Like we could do this. And then could there be any issues? No, for i in range zero, we'll just get nothing. So it's all good. Now the column is going to be equal to rho p plus one plus i. And now, and what I'm saying, why four minus count is because, oh, if I have two, if I found already one here, then my count is going to be two. I'll have to count two of the same sign. Then I need two. So if I found two on the left side, I'll need to find two more on the right. Actually, I need to find one more on the right side. But the point is, I can use the count to sort of see, okay, how much do I need here? And now we have this as the column, and the column needs to be less than or equal to the number, actually, it needs to be strictly less than the number of columns, and that is the length of the board, zero. And if this happens, then do something else we need to break. And then I will assume Let's assume I've returned something that's true before this. So now we're looking at the count. If column is greater than or equal to zero, then if the current one is, actually let's write what the current thing we're looking at is, it's going to be board of row P and the column that we're looking at. And now we're looking at if current is equal to start, then we increase the count by one. And if it's not equal to start, then we need to break out. And now here, we do a similar thing. We say again, we have this, what the current thing is. And I'm thinking, you know, is there a way that we can maybe not have these two loops do this at the same time? Maybe, but it, as I said at the beginning of the, in the first video, what I'm trying to do now is just have simplicity. Let's just like make this thing work. So now count plus equals one, else I need to break. So yeah, actually no, else here, I'll need to return false. So I return false. What I'm thinking is, say I found one here, one on the left, one on the right. And when I find one on the left, I'll have count will be equal to two, and then I'll have for i in range two, I'll have a column, okay. I'll start one, I'll get another hit, the count will be three. And, hmm, but here's an issue I need to have if count is equal to four, I need to return true. And here I also need to check, actually not here, but maybe just here, I need to check if count is equal to four, return true. There is most likely a better way to do this, but this thing right now just worked. I don't know, will we actually ever get here? I'm legitimately not sure. Anyways, let's test it out. We're not optimizing now. We're just like doing this thing where we're trying to get these things to work as fast as possible. So it's this or this, Y and or. If you win in either the column or the row, you won. So that's what I'm returning. And let's see if this thing works. It would be a little bit of a miracle if it did on the first try, but you know, let's see. Let's see what happens. So I give you a move. I'll give you a four. You, let's see, play four, three, three, two. Okay, it's made a mistake. I'm curious now where the mistake is. So let's, you know, print the count. 
and let's print the so interesting let's see, print the column p and row p let's see like what have we missed because we have missed something and that's what i said if it worked in the beginning it's a miracle what is, oh yes this is the so two is the count oh so you counted two of them why did you count two of them that is not what i want like you should have counted zero of them so it means you were here right let's print um what is this row p so oh <laughs> it's not the row that we're looking at right we're not iterating over the row we're iterating over the column that is what it is okay that was a i hope that's what it is it seems like that was the thing so now let's say get out it's an interesting error to have I'm curious about we would have caught it just by looking at things. Okay, count is one, count is one, count is again, your count is one. Oh, bye. I'm curious why the count was one. Let's try this again. Wait, I'm actually going. Hmm, what am I doing here? I think I'm going to the right here. Oh, I mean, wait a second. Oh yeah, there was nothing to the left because I was playing, yeah, when I was when I played, what was it called? I played here, yeah, there was nothing to the left. So of course we just went further okay i'm almost curious did i ever get here i don't think i do i'm gonna laugh if we get here no we never get here oh somebody won weird wait what how did somebody win now i just need to check this because this might be an error i do not see a win i invite you here to pause for the next five to ten minutes and try to see if there's an error somewhere if we've messed up something so now's the time to do that okay so after a little bit of debugging i figured out that the problem was in the checkpoint column we did not test this enough so if the start isn't equal to this then what do we need i mean it just counted if there's zeros or not actually it didn't even count that it just counted if there's four below then you win which is not what the game is else you return false so if you don't have these things, then you have to return false. And now the game is, ah, it, it works. It works in general. So now with that, let's just like get rid of these print statements that we put in here. And now we have something that seems to be working. So with that in mind, let's see, test it out. Four, six, two, okay, we can play everywhere. And let's actually win. Uh, so there's a six let's put a what do we need a one two we put in another six and say we put in a four and we won goodbye beautiful so now we have the winning in the rows and the columns let's look at the diagonals so what do we need for diagonals say x played here now it's checking it's in, like it's checking both diagonals needs to check this one okay it has one and then a zero Okay, this, does, this doesn't work out for x, so x hasn't won. And then, bam, you play here, you check this diagonal, you have one, and then nothing. You have here nothing, so you have that counts two, you don't win. And then you go here, okay, I have one, I'm done here. And I go here, one, two, oh, that's four, I'm done. So that's really what we need to do now. And I here invite you to take 10 to 20 minutes and try to make this, try to make a thing that checks if you want on both diagonals and remember the thing about diagonals if this is say i and this is j this is j plus one and this is j minus one this is i minus one and this is i plus one there's two types of diagonals meaning you have say i and j and you're checking if you have on j plus one and i minus one then this is j minus one i plus one the thing that all of these numbers have in common is that their sum is i plus j but the thing that all of these numbers here have in common is that they're absolute i mean not they're absolute i mean their difference the i minus is i minus j the difference between the row and the column is i minus j so there's two of these to look at and now without further ado let's go to the solution okay so now let's add the check when diagonal so we do this we first copy this or check when diagonal now we need to actually define what does it mean to check wins on diagonals and we define this to be okay so we're start the start is the same the count at the beginning is one beautiful now we need to go for i in range again in range 
So we'll have the two diagonals, right? Let's do first the i plus j is equal to a constant diagonal. So that will be the diagonal that goes from, if I am not mistaken, it's the one that goes from the bottom, bottom left to top right. So now let's do this. So we need four. So we need to go both left and right here. So go left. So it means to go left means to go left and down. So the way we check this is we have four. I in range of three. What are we doing? We are again checking if the board <laughs> of what now? So we have what's called the row that we're at is. So because we're going down, that's row P plus one plus I. Because I starts at zero, that's why we had a plus one. And the column is going to be column of P minus one minus I. Because now their sum is row P plus column P, which is what we need. And now if both row needs to be so, because we're going upwards with rows, we need to check that it's less than or strictly less than the number of rows. And let's just like call this num rows is the length of the board. And we'll probably need, need number of columns as well. Length of the board, zero. So if row is less than what we need, we need to see it's less than the number of rows. We don't need to check that it's greater than zero because we know that if we're here, then row P is, this I mean, it's gonna be at least one, row P is at least zero. So we have this and we need to have, because the columns are decreasing, we need the column to be greater than negative one or greater than or equal to zero. And now we need to test. So if this is the case, check, like we're checking if we're in the board. And if we are in the board at this point, then what do we need to do? Well, we need to look at the square. The current square is going to be equal to the board of row and column. And now we check that if start is equal to the current square, then count plus equals one, right? And if it's not, then we need to break and we need to go up and to the right. So are we missing anything here? Because let's look at the code for rows. So it's count plus one. No, we just break, we just break. And if we're out of the range. Oh yeah, so we need to have an, if this thing isn't, we need to have an else here that we don't need to be looking more for this break. So now we go, go right and up, up and right we go for I in range. Again, we're doing this thing that we had previously four minus the count. Before we do that, we check if the count is equal to four, then, um, yeah, then we just like return true, you've won. And if not, we go for this. In this range, we have again, just a similar thing as we had before. Now, here's going to be the opposite. Here, the rows are going to be ones that are decreasing, like that's going up. And the columns are the ones that are gonna be increasing. So now with that, and the sum is the same. And now we do exact same thing, we check if we're in the board and the way we do that is we check now if the row must be greater than minus one and the column must be less than the number of columns and if this is true then we look at our board it's these uh, what is it this row column is the current thing and with that if start is equal to the current one then what we do actually we don't need to check because we're doing in range between my four minus count. So we can just add count plus equals one. And then here in the, the else statement, we can break. I'm also thinking like, do we need this if count is equal to four? If we'll just like do this here. Um, this, at this point, actually it's a negligible speed up. So might, there might not be any need for it. And if you're out of here, you need to also just like break out of the loop you need to break free. And with this, what we have, we have, okay, we've checked the current, 
the start is equal to current, increase the count. And now, if count is equal to four, then we need to return true. And if it's not equal to four, then we need to continue. Now we need to set the count, count to one, and so count is one again. And now we need to go over the other diagonal. So this one was i plus j is a constant, and the other one will be i minus j is equal to a constant. And the way we're going to be doing this is actually like also similar. So now instead of going from go left and down, we will go left and up. So how do we do this? Actually, I invite you here to pause for you know, five, 10 minutes if you haven't already done so and try to write up this part of the for loop, this part of the checking. And now the thing is, it's actually very similar. So instead of like what we're, we're doing here with like the plus i and minus i and here minus i plus i, it will be actually pretty, pretty similar, which is also what makes me think, can I just like, my instinct is let me just copy this. Actually, let me follow my instinct because like right now, we're not looking to show that we're amazing coders. We're just looking to do this job quickly. So first I minus G is a constant. Okay, let's fix this. So instead of row P, so let's first go, go left, go left and up now, left and up. And how we do this is so to go left is to decrease one, and to decrease one on the columns and to go up is to decrease one on the rows. So now we're checking that both of these are greater than negative one. We have this at the start of that. Great, beautiful. If count is four, return true. I'm curious, uh, let's just test out what happens when you delete this and in both instances. So, and now I'm not going, I'm going to left and up and I'm going right and down. So, and to go down, is to increase the rows by one. You know, because I'm increasing the rows by one, I need to check that the rows is less than the number of rows. And with this, uh, if the count is four, I return true. And finally, if it's not, I return a false. Correct, correct. All seems good, all seems good. Now let's actually test this thing out. Let's see what happens when you run this game. So we have a four and okay, all is good. Let's create something that, that works. So what do I want? I want a three, then you put a three, a two, a one, a two, a two, a one, a one, five, one. And yes, we have one. This seems to be working well. And now we have our game. And now with this, I will invite you to, like here's actually a good place for us to end the video right now because it's getting kind of long. And the next step will be, now that we've created this game, I am not going to look at the graphics next time. Next time I'm going to be cleaning this up. And also we will be creating our AI. So that's going to be fun. And as always, thanks for problem solving.